Hey guys, what's up? DB here. Uh, we're going to continue the second part of our Core i5 building a computer series. Um, in this segment, we're going to be installing the CPU and putting the motherboard into the case and connecting everything and turning on the computer for the first time. Make sure before um, you throw away anything from the processor that you flip over the manual because there is a sticker on the back if you'd like to apply it to the case. Here we have some diagrams that came with the instruction manual for installing the CPU and heatsink. Uh, some basic diagrams to show you how it's done. Here we have the heatsink with thermal grease pre-applied on the bottom, which will be connected to the processor and lay on top to transfer heat correctly. This is a major difference between AMD and Intel because AMD you have to purchase separately the thermal grease to apply, which is kind of a pain if you've never done it before to spread it evenly and make sure heat is transferred correctly. So you want to undo the the wire here so it doesn't get caught in the fan and the fan blades when it's spinning. Um, so you just want to undo that. It's going to have to be connected to the motherboard for the CPU fan slot um, afterwards. But we're just going to we're going to set it off to the side uh, while we take a look at the, the CPU socket on the motherboard here. Be extremely careful with this step that you don't bend any pins or crush anything. Uh, the processor has a zero force insertion, which means you have to use no pressure to install the processor. Basically, if you put it in correctly and line it up correctly with the pins. It will just uh, like fall into place, and then you just simply push down the uh, the the socket cover, the metal that will hold it in place permanently uh, until you have to remove it again or whatever. So uh, you want to just take off that sticker, um, and then you want to remove this uh, this like uh, protective cover here that's holding it into place. And then you can see inside where the where the CPU gets mounted on the socket. You can see that all the the uh, the CPU pins will line up here and you see that triangle in the one corner that has to line up with the triangle that's on the processor that will be installed uh, so you can see there comparison uh, so this is this is the socket where we're going to install the CPU momentarily you can see the RAM modules there so we want to open this up carefully and holding the processor by the edges we're going to take it out of the plastic and you can see the bottoms are going to line up perfectly when they're put in place and we're just we're just gonna uh, flip the processor around so that we line up those two triangles there, and we're just gonna place it right into the socket, and it's gonna drop into place. You can see it's completely secured there. Um, it'll move around if you try to, but don't because of the pins. So we're just gonna lower that cover, and we're gonna gently, gently push down that metal, uh, the metal lever there, and lock that into place. And now you can see that your CPU has been installed. So now we have the heatsink. You can see here it's got um, these like knobs that get turned like about uh, 90 degrees, I believe, um, and then that will hold the heatsink in place on the motherboard. So using a flat-bladed screwdriver, you can just kind of twist them. It's very easy to install, um, which is it's a lot easier than the AMD one with all the levers and having to line them all up for the Phenom 2s. So I was happy about that with this build. Um, so there you go, no problems, it's completely secured, uh, and I, I think it's going to work great when we turn it on. So, and now we're going to connect the wire for the uh, the CPU heatsink, which you can see will line up right next to the CPU socket, very conveniently located. We're going to twist tie the wire together to hold it uh, this out of the way, and really neatens it up a bit. So you can see the board there, the RAM modules, CPU and heatsink applied. And uh, yeah, let's let's put this uh, let's put this in the case now. We've cleared the case out. We've inserted all the spacers on the bottom of the motherboard uh, for the bottom of the motherboard to connect to, and then we're going to line up the screws with those and put them right in place. A lot of cases can hold different size motherboards, uh, so b before you purchase one, make sure that you have the right case that it'll fit in, and they'll oftentimes give you the dimensions online. Uh, so you so you know that you're getting the right the right board. So you just want to line it up carefully with the the I/O shield panel there. Make sure you don't scratch the motherboard or chip it trying to put it in the uh, put it in the case. Um, we're just gonna very gently screw the screws into place. Make sure you don't screw them in too tightly and crack the motherboard because um, that would be obviously an issue. Now we're gonna connect the 24 or 20 plus four uh, power connectors here on the side. Sometimes they can be difficult to put in. You just want to be careful you don't break the motherboard and snap anything. You can connect the CPU power, the 8 uh, volt or 8 uh, pin power supply there. 
and uh, over here we're going to connect the serial ATA ports. This is a pain on this motherboard because they're like on an angle there, and we didn't have a lot of room left in our case to fit them in place. But perhaps you could install them before you secure the motherboard. Um, so there you go. We have our four or five uh, serial ATA cables attached. Now we want to connect the uh, HD audio, the USB 2.0 connectors from inside the case, and we want to connect the um, power LED, the power button, uh, uh, all that stuff. We want to connect there the reset switch. We want to connect that to the proper port. You can consult the, mat the documentation that came with your motherboard manual um, to be sure that you have everything in the right place. So here we, we have everything connected and lined up. And uh, yeah, once we figure out which one these go into, we'll be good to go with the wiring. The wiring can definitely be confusing. Sometimes it's easier if you have a flashlight to see what you're doing, as is the case here. Um, so there you go. You can see all the wires connected properly. This motherboard was cool. It had a feature with the digital readout. I've never used it, but it supposedly helps with um, with uh, troubleshooting. So we're going to install the graphics card here. It's pretty simple installation. Just line it up with the proper PCI Express 2.0 slot on the motherboard. This one has two for Crossfire SLI, depending on the brand of your motherboard. We're going to line up the PCI FireWire card as well. You can consult our different video tutorials to show you in depth how to install these cards in the motherboard properly. We want to line up the PCI slot covers and put them in place as well. And uh, we're going to go ahead and flip the case uh, back properly, right side up. And uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to line up the the cover now. And you can see everything is uh, in place there. It's looking pretty good. The wires are a little bit messy, but you can get a module power supply, and then it'll only have the cables that you need, particularly, so you don't have such a mess in there uh, with spaghetti wires. So we're going to place the uh, the case side panel back on, and we're going to screw that in place, and then we're going to fire up this computer and see how it works. So you can see the back there, everything's lined up. It's looking pretty nice. I'm very happy with this build overall. And it's an i5-750, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM at 1600 MHz, 4.75 terabyte hard drives, and um, we got a GeForce 9800GT graphics card in there, some Firewire ports, AE serial ATA ports, and a bunch of USB, HDMI, DVI, VGA ports as well. So, um, yeah, we're good. Booting up uh, Windows 7 here. 64-bit Windows 7 Home Premium, and it works great. I love the new i5 CPU, and we have overclocked it to 4.1 GHz successfully. Thank you. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe.